memory verse. Scripture memory verse this week is Matthew 23, 11. But he who is greatest among you shall be servant, shall be your servant. I thought I had that memorized. Matthew 23, 11. But whoever is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 23, 11. Anybody else? Matthew 23, 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 23, 11. Good job. Anybody else? I'll do it. Okay. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 23.11? Matthew 23.11, yeah. Good job, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Anybody else? Matthew 23.11, but the greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 23.11. Good job. Anybody else? Matthew 23, 11. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 23, 11. Good job. Let me set, let me set the stage up here. It's really talking about uh, really the difference between leadership in the world and leadership in God's kingdom. I mean... It, these, these men that he's talking about, if you read the text, they're rabbis, they're, or what you would call rabbis, they're religious authorities, they're Pharisees, they're scribes, they're people that's telling them who God is, but what they do is he tells them, do what they say, but don't do what they do. So they're actually ruling over people, but they're not living out what they're saying. And so what he tells them is that you can tell by their actions who they are, not what they're saying. See, because it's easy to talk a good game, but what are you doing? See, because we need to be doers and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. That's when he says, but he who is greatest, he who is, is your elder, he who is more or larger is what the word means among you shall be your servant. And, it, and a servant, again, it can, be a, it can be a word for teacher and pastor, but I don't believe that's what it's talking about here. It's talking about a, 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 an attendant or a minister or one who waits on tables. We're going to talk about this Sunday. It's a waiter and a servant. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. And what he's saying is, is that the kingdom of God is, the, is diametrically opposed to the world. You have the world on one hand, and you have the kingdom of God on the other. And in the world today, we're still doing this, that, that we really esteem people who have a Ph.D. behind their name. And I'm not picking on people. Some Ph.D. people are some good people. But we actually promote and esteem people because of titles because of clothes, because of the way they, 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 they lead. And, and it's nothing to do with what their heart is. And Jesus has now been given the name above all names. That one day every knee will bow. He's been given all authority on heaven and earth. Because he became a servant. And in the last night of his life, remember what happened? He took a towel. And he girded himself. He took off his outer garment, he girded himself with a towel, and he washed the disciples' feet. It's John chapter 13. And that is actually the, the, the lowest servant on the planet at that time would wash your feet. It would wash your feet. And, and that's what he became. The God of the universe became the lowest servant and became the greatest when he went to the cross and he served uh, uh, his father, and became obedient even to the point of death, death on a cross. Now, really, when you look at this, uh, he says, don't call anybody rabbi, which means it's an official title of honor, meaning master. He said, don't call anybody master. See, you got to go to the King James to get that. He says teacher in verse 10, but it's really the word master in the King James. And that means a guide. Don't call anybody on earth your guide. It's from a word that means to command or rule. He says, don't call anyone father. I mean, how more clear can you get for the, for the uh, 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 Catholics 
Don't call any spiritual leader father. Listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling your dad father. But when it comes to a spiritual sense where you're given a title of one of honor over you, you have one father who is in heaven. You have one father. You have one teacher, Jesus. We don't need to let anybody else rule over us. No other authority over us. But then when we let God rule over us, then we understand the authority that he has given in the world, in the church. And, and so that's really what he's saying is, is that he who wants to be greatest among you shall be your servant. And, and, and that's what we want to understand, is that Jesus was a servant. The Spirit wants to make us servants, not give us titles, not, not, not promote us by, by us uh, like the world does. It puts, br brings all kinds of people around you and you lord over them. You rule over them. No, it's the servant nature of Jesus that you lead by example. You know, we often want our kids, you tell our kids, don't do what I do, do what I do, do what I tell you. And that's what he's saying here. But really, for our kids and for anybody around us, we are to be first. If we want to be great in the kingdom of God, if we want to be noticed, the way to be noticed is to begin to serve, to lay our life down. Because it's not the world's way of doing things. It's the kingdom's way. He even says, and this is your next week, so keep an eye on this. This is next week's uh, memory verse. It's 2312. And whoever exalts himself will be abased. And, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Or in the King, New King James, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. So if you try to jockey for position, you try to move yourself into position, and that's the reason, really, I can just tell you that I don't give people positions. I don't give people places. Because most of the time, people in the world, they look to get a place. And when they get there, they stop doing what they're doing. The body of Christ is just simply that. It's the body of Christ. And if you're going to live for Jesus, you should begin to serve in the capacity that God is giving you. And that capacity is coming underneath first the authority of God. And then you begin to, to serve others. That's why, that's why I believe that you find um, your, your leaders for the church serving already. Who's serving the people? Who's actually doing the work of the ministry? I, if I can call you and go, hey, you want a job? Then you're sure you're going to start doing exactly what I hire you to do. And, and you're going to have performance reports and you, you, know, you want raises and everything. I mean, listen to me. The Spirit of God in us should be guiding us. That's what he says. Don't call, don't call anyone your master. It means a guide. It's from a word to command and rule. We have one guy that got, Jesus said, I won't leave you as orphans. I'll send you back another, the Holy Spirit. That's our guy. He's the one that's teaching us. He's the one that's leading us. He's the one that's conforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. And he's the one that will give you the strength and the wisdom to be a servant. And he's the one that gives place. He gives all those things in the body of Christ. So he who is greatest, he who is elder uh, among you shall be your servant. And I really think that, that this is where um, the heart of every saint should be, is to serve others. It's the one another ministry. And if everybody would just look to serve somebody, nobody would be out of a job. It's that simple. Everybody would have something to do. There's plenty of work to do. The, the, the field is white for harvest, but the laborers are few. And we need to be people who would serve and lay down our lives. But if you seek to get noticed, you seek to put a PhD beside your, your name, you seek to, to dress in a certain way or draw attention to yourself by the way you do what you're doing, you, you go clean and, and, or, or whatever you do, and then you go, oh, look at me, and you try to exalt yourself, God is going to humble you. And if you just humble yourself and come along and be a servant and do what you do because of the Spirit of God and the kingdom of God for the glory of God so that we can all work together to see souls saved, then God will exalt you. He, he lifts up those who humble themselves instead of walking in our uh, sin nature, walking in our uh, and serving ourselves and walking in our pride. We need to learn to let ourselves be humbled by just saying, you know what? I'm just a servant here. 
That's all I do. A slave. A slave to righteousness. Anybody else? Matthew 23, 11. Okay, next week, Matthew 23, 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 